All right, this is my pride and joy. Uh, the videos you see me do from Mexico for the last couple of years, maybe a few years, um, have been done on this laptop. This is a Dell N5050 model. It's got an i3 core processor, uh, 6 gigs of RAM, uh, 500 gig hard drive, and uh, it's been a pretty solid laptop um, since I got it. And uh, now I'm going to upgrade it. I've got an i5 core processor right here. It's uh, the maximum uh, that it'll handle, as well as 8 gigs of RAM. So I'm going from 6 gigs to 8 gigs, and come to find out the 6 gigs that are in here are mismatch modules. So I'm going to put a couple of matching modules uh, from Kingston in here. These are 13, 33 megahertz uh, sticks. So I guess that's the SODIMM RAM. So we'll probably do the RAM first, change that out, and then I'll go on to change out the processor. Oh yeah, real quick, the i3 core is a uh, 2350M 2.2 gig processor, and it is up, being upgraded to an i5 2430M 2.4 gig processor. So yeah, this should uh, boost the speed up a little bit. Okay, so the RAM is located underneath the keyboard on this particular model. You have to get four little tabs, one on the escape key, one between the F5 and F6 key, another one at the F11 key, and the other one is at the delete key. So you got to get those little tabs out of the way, and then slide it forward towards the screen, and flip it over. So, yep, and that'll expose the RAM modules. So I'll go ahead and See, it's just two little springs on the side that'll allow it to release, and then it flips up like that. So there's the 2 gig module right there. And then this is the 4 gig module down here. And I'm trying to do this with two hands. There we go. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and get them out of the way. So, yeah, two mismatched modules. I'm sure that's probably not help with the speed because I don't think they're the right uh, I don't know doesn't really say this 2 gig it's hard to say exactly what those numbers are and you know if they even go with the Samsung because this is a Samsung 4 gig uh, PC3 10600 uh, SODIMM stick this one just looks like a generic brand so Anyway, I'll go ahead and get these other 8 gig sticks installed and then we'll move on to getting the processor out. Alright, the one 4 gig module goes in pretty easily. The one on top is a bit of a pain, so I'll have to work on that, I'm sure. Okay, yeah, actually slid right in, no problem. And then snap it down, make sure your latches are back in place, so yep. The RAM upgrade is complete, so next we'll move on to the processor. Oh yeah, I didn't mention this in the first step, but yeah, be sure to remove your battery so there's no charge going anything as you're replacing parts. So next, I'll be removing the keyboard, a little keyboard ribbon here, so I'll need a screwdriver, probably two hands. There we go, that little tab right there, it just flips right up. And then it should just come right out like that. And we'll just set this off to the side. All right, next there's two palm rest screws, one here, one there. So I'll go ahead and get those removed. All right, next I've got a palm rest cable there and one here. So I gotta get those lifted up and disconnected. All right, got those out of the way. All right, next we'll go ahead and close up the laptop. And we will turn it over like this. And I got 15, yeah, 15 screws starting from, we'll go basically clockwise here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Get all those out so we can uh, flip it back over. Alright, so I put all 15 screws in a little pile there, and now I can go ahead and flip it back over and open the laptop back up. Now we're ready to go ahead and lift the palm wrist off of the laptop. I'm probably going to need two hands for this, so hold on. Alright, a little tricky, but I got it. So now we can go ahead and put this out of the way. 
And here is our heat sink and processors under here with the fans. So I've got to take one, two, three, four screws out there to expose the uh, processor. All right, there's a numerical order. One, two, three, four. So you remember that if you're doing something similar. Now we should be, uh, I think i got to disconnect. Yeah, i got to move this out of the way real quick. Yep, there we go. This is the LCD cable that i got to get out of the way. And I don't think we need to take it off of there. I can tell, but we should be able to, yep, get just enough room to access the processor. Something like that. So now this, let me get my flat screwdriver, should just have to turn only 180. This is the locking uh, screw. There we go. And that unlocks it. So now this should just come right up. Yep, just like that. So there you go, high three core processor coming out. So now let me get the i5 and we'll go ahead and put that in. All right, this should only go in one way, just like that. If you need a marking, I remember this one had a label and there was a strip of, I guess, uh, connections of some sort for the processor, so that was on top, and that's where that one is. We'll probably add a little bit of uh, thermal paste, just a tad bit of it, because there's not much on this one. Yeah, upon further review, I'm going to get this fan the fan cable unplugged, and I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, LCD screen cable out of the way. Okay, so here's the other side of the heat sink. Yeah, we could probably just put a little dab of uh, thermal paste on there, so it's got uh, got a little bit of coating, and just not much at all, because it's already got some on there. All right, a little bit of thermal paste. Uh, probably just put a dab. Probably right in the center because it's going to mush down. Come on, get off of there. Don't be like that. Okay, that should probably be plenty. Just a little dab. So now we're ready to go ahead and put the heat sink and fan back in place and connect up the fan and the LCD plug. Actually, while I got it out, I might as well go ahead and blow it out. You know, get the dust and stuff out of there so it'll run a little better and help it run cooler. All right, needed two hands. Just get a can of uh, electronic duster, blow it out, and now I'm ready to go ahead and put this thing back in. Okay, before I connect them up, I'll go ahead and get the uh, screws back uh, tightened down. Number one, two three and four. All right, so they're tight. Now we'll go ahead and plug up the fan. Right there. And next will be the LCD screen. Right there. And double checking everything. We're about ready to put the palm rest back on. get two hands again. Everything should just snap right back in place. Like so. Oh yeah, and I didn't make a mention of this. Uh, <laughs> get that locking screw back in. I actually did that before recording it, forgot. And uh, so make sure that's locked in so the processor doesn't, uh, you know, move, which it's not supposed to. All right, next, and pop your palm rest screws back in and tighten them down. One there and one here. There we go. All right, next will be the palm rest cables. These will be fun because I got big fingers and these are small areas, so uh, definitely need two hands for this. Just another side note here. It might help to get some tweezers to help you get that little plastic lock back in place so it holds the ribbon in place. Uh, I got one in, now the other one's next. Alright, both are set. Alright, next we'll close the laptop. Not ready for the keyboard installation yet. 
flip it back over and reinstall the 15 screws to uh, for the uh, palm rest. All right, we're ready to flip this back over like that. Get straight. Open it back up like that, and we're ready to reinstall the keyboard. So, yep, make sure you got the ribbon facing up when you reconnect it. I'll do two hands again. All right, and then lock that little flap back down to lock the ribbon in place. And next, we'll go ahead and reinstall the keyboard. Make sure you get all four little latches to lock it in place. All right, I'll go ahead and reinstall the battery like that. Lock it in place. And I think we're ready to fire it up. Yeah, that's right, this one hand is tough. And we'll see what happens. All right, starting windows. Nice glare off the screen in my forehead. So we'll let it boot up and we'll check the specs. All right. Uh, we will go to control panel. Wait for it to boot up. Come on. All right. Go to, well, I had system there. There it is. Device software ready to use system. All right, i5 core 2430, 8 gigs of RAM, successfully installed. My Windows experience needs refreshed. It was a 5.6, so let's see, before 6.6, 7.3, 5.6, 6.2, 5.9. So let's do a refresh and see where we're at now. Oh, couldn't be computed, nah, figures. Oh, I need to have AC plugged in. All right, well, let me get the adapter. All right, we're plugged in. Look, you can tell. Now, let's see what we're rated at. All right, we're getting close, and while this is almost finishing, uh, the processor and the RAM that I installed is the max amount that uh, this particular laptop supports. So it will not support an i an i7 and will not support anything higher than uh, 8 gigs. So, I mean, for me, with video editing and all that, it works perfect. That's pretty much what I bought it for. So, yeah, I just thought I'd pass that information along as uh, the Windows Experience Index is finishing up. All right, so we've gone to a 5.9. Processor went to a... 6.9 from 6.6. .6. Memory is the same. That's shocking. 7.4. Uh, graphics went from a 5.6 to 5.9. Gaming graphics the same. 6.2. And the hard disk is the same. 5.9. So, yeah, a little bit of improvement, but uh, good enough. Well, yeah, that uh, pretty much wraps up this upgrade of a Dell um, Inspiron. N5050 laptop from 6 gigs of RAM to 8 gigs and from an i3 core processor to an i5 core processor. So hope you enjoy it and I'll put a link to a video that I use for doing this upgrade for better reference than mine. So hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.